All right, what's up guys? Today I got the 24 to 70 G Master Mark II here, and we're basically gonna be testing out the different focal lengths between 24, 35, 50, and 70. So this is gonna give you guys an idea of the types of um, compositions you could get um, with the 24 to 70 over here. Just my overall opinion of this lens. It's the best lens I've ever owned. It's super sharp, tack sharp. Um, you can go super wide for establishing the scene. And you can also um, punch into 70 for that excellent compression and bokeh. So I'm gonna have my model over here and uh, we're just gonna take some portrait shots. We're gonna, again, we're gonna go 24, 35, 50, and 70. And uh, we're gonna see um, how it turns out. So if you guys are ready, let's get right into it. First shot, we're gonna go 24 millimeters and we're gonna be shooting vertical for this demonstration. So here we are at the first scene, and let me start off by saying that this was such a beautiful location just right off the coast of California. So at 24 millimeters, you have the ability to establish the setting and or the environment. So due to the wide nature of this focal length, it has the ability to draw in more of the surrounding story and elements. This is perfect for nature photography, architecture, and astro. At 35 millimeters, you have the best of both worlds, incorporating both the surrounding environment and the subject. So compared to the 24 millimeter, you can see that the subject can sometimes get lost in the background. This is not wrong, it's just a stylistic choice. Okay, so now at 50 millimeters, you can clearly see that the subject becomes the main focus of the composition. 50 millimeters is naturally a great focal length for capturing portraits as it lets the main subject stand out. All right, so now onto 70 millimeters. This is where you can get that ultra creamy bokeh and rich compression. Understand that as the focal length increases, the distance from your subject to the background decreases. So in other words, you bring the background closer to your subject, creating a sort of dreamy aesthetic. All right, so we've arrived at our second location. I basically have my model over here sitting down on like a lit up area. And we're gonna go again, 24, 35, 15, 70. So again, when looking at 24 millimeters, our subject kind of blends into the background. Um, and this again is a stylistic choice. Um, for this second location, I did stay at the same spot, again, just to demonstrate the range of this zoom lens. And when you compare 24 millimeter to 35, um, 35 really is the best of both worlds because um, you have enough information um, that you get from the background and the surroundings, but the subject is also more uh, apparent and sticks out. So I'd say 24 millimeters is a bit more specialized. Uh, you really have to know what you're doing with that lens. And although you can get up close to your subject with a 24 millimeter, uh, and it's also great for small spaces. Uh, again, for this video, I, I stayed at the same place uh, just to show you guys, you know, the true range of the lens. You know, just standing from where I was, uh, 24, you get a nice overall picture to establish the scene and for 35 millimeters uh, it's kind of best of both worlds again but moving on to 50 we have um more background separation from our subject and um the background so it's a little bit more blurred out um the background is a little bit more creamy uh, and our subject starts to pop a lot more um so naturally again 50 mil is a great focal length for street photography, portrait photography, and just capturing people. So moving on to 70 mil, this makes everything look so dreamy uh, and professional looking. Your subject is right there popping out and the background is totally creamed out, rich, um, and the background is drawn in closer to your subject. 70 millimeters between 50 millimeters and 70 millimeters it's kind of like the same comparison between 24 and 35 whereas 24 you have um, more of the background and surrounding elements 35 you have a little bit of both same thing for 50 mil and 70 uh, for 50 mil your subject still is a lot more apparent than 35 but you still have uh, a bit more background so this could be good uh, for you know if you want to also have some of the location in the shot, especially if your shot is very scenic, such as the one we have right now. And 70 mil, it's, it completely just makes your subject stand out and kind of um, puts the background literally like kind of in the background. So the focus becomes all about um, your subject 
more 70 mil than anything. And this could be a stylistic choice again, because uh, if you're doing mainly portraits and you just want to assure method, uh, a sure focal length of capturing the shot, 70 millimeters on this lens works out fantastic. Okay, so I found a nice leading line. So we're gonna do a leading line type shot. Again, 24, 35, 50, and 70. Seriously, every time I hit record, a plane flies by. The effort it takes going in these videos, guys. So let's just take this opportunity to remind you guys, if you're enjoying the video so far, please leave me a like for the algorithm because it's going to help me out a lot. All right, so moving on to the next scene. Um, here we are kind of by the edge of the cliff and my model over here is just overlooking the scene. Um, you can see at 24, you have a lot of the background, a lot of the surrounding elements in the shot and our subject looks kind of like blended in and you know a smaller speck in the larger world so to speak and so forgive me if the composition wasn't on point we all have our days okay so give me a break again this video was just for demonstrative purposes i've definitely taken better shots with this lens so don't judge this lens based on the one shot i took and unfortunately, for some reason, this is what this was the only 24 millimeter shot that I had. I don't know why I didn't take more. Now, when we compare 24 to 35 in this shot, in this specific example, it's like night and day. Again, everything looks more dreamy in the 35 for this particular shot. And it, overall, I think it it just captures the essence of the moment because you're drawing in best of both worlds. Again, the subject and the surrounding foreground background and the elements to establish the scene all right so now when we look at 35 compared to 50 obviously you're gonna see the subject start to pop out more and more um in the background at 50 becomes uh, noticeably more blurred out so if you want your subject to stand out that would be the focal length to get again you're able to blur the background with wider focal lengths such as 24 and 35 but you do have to stand a bit closer to the subject. And as I mentioned a few times in this video, I'm standing roughly around the same spot in order to demonstrate the range of the lens. So maybe I can do more creative shots in a future video, like with the 24 and 35, if that's something you guys want to see. So when we compare the 50 mil to 70, we still see that in 50 millimeters, the background still has an element and a you know, a function in the composition. Whereas at 70, the background is totally creamied out, blurred out. And what ends up happening is that your subject is just going to be sharp and popping out. And this to me is where 70 millimeters start standing out as a true portrait focal length. All right. So we're going to do another test shot. We found this cool looking uh, bench over here and Again, we're going to go through all the focal lengths on the 24 to 70 GM2. So moving on to the bench scene, um, what I noticed right away for 24 millimeters is that it's pretty good for capturing full body shots. Um, you know, if you want to capture, maybe if you're into modeling or fashion and you need a shot of the whole outfit from head to toe, 24 millimeters is a wide enough focal length to capture in general like the whole body now when we look at 35 millimeters um, again it's drawing in the elements of the surroundings and the subject starts to creep in as becoming the star of the shot not quite yet but when you do go to 50 mil so when we compare 35 to 50 between 35 and 50 you see that the trees in the background become less contrasty and more smoothened out, more creamy. Uh, bokeh will start to become more apparent at this focal length and your subject will start to pop out. And from here, moving from 50 to 70, you can see that at 70, um, your subject becomes the star of the shot. Whatever you guys are focusing on at 70 millimeters is going to be the star of the shot. Not the background, not the foreground. It's gonna be your subject. Now, if we compare 70 to 24, you can see a huge difference. So, you know, keep in mind that you don't always wanna shoot at this focal length, especially if you wanna capture 
the scenery and surroundings. Uh, if you go to a great looking scenic location and you're shooting at a very tight focal length, 70 mil, 85, you're not gonna be really um, showing your viewer uh, any sort of storytelling uh, you're just mainly going to be capturing your subject i mean again th it's all stylistic and these are all creative choices that you know vary from person to person but that's just some general advice because if you're shooting at a tight focal length you're not going to be able to get much of the surrounding in the background so if the color balance is looking a little bit uh inconsistent that's because the clouds keep going in and in front of the sun so um Forgive me for that. I'm going to try to like balance everything in post, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's about the joy of shooting and just getting out there and having some fun. But all I can say though, is that the 24 to 70 GM2 is like the king of lenses. It is the king of lenses, actually perfect for street photography. Um, Astro with the 24 architecture portrait photography. You have that 70 mil, nice compression. So uh, this lens seriously does it all, guys. Okay, so now to the last scene of that day's shoot. Here we have 24 millimeters, and it's just a beautiful backlit shot. Um, I definitely could have done better with the composition and played around with the angles a little bit more. But again, I, I was kind of bottlenecking myself by staying in the same place for you guys, for the views, you know? So 24 millimeters, if you're not standing, you know, up close to your subject to where to the point where the background is blurred out and you're using 24 mil to kind of establish the setting, the scene, um, it definitely has more texture, I'd say, than something as a 35 mil. So when we compare 24 to 35, uh, the background foreground has less texture to it. And what starts to happen is that your subject is going to start uh, popping out a little bit more. So again, best of both worlds, 35 mil. Great storytelling lens, actually. At 50 millimeters, um, the background is going to be a lot more creamy to start. Uh, less texture in the background, more texture and contrast on your subject. And this is where your subject starts becoming the star of the show. Um, not quite like, you know, the main role the main lead yet but it's starting to because at 50 mil you still have a wide enough um composition to where the background is still incorporated into the shot all right now at 70 millimeters guys this is where your subject becomes the lead actress lead actor of the story it no longer becomes so much about the surrounding elements it becomes about the subject now let's compare uh, the 70 to 24. As you can see, again, in 24 millimeters, we kind of have an idea of where our subject is, where we are. Okay, it looks like a woodland area. It looks like a, you know, possibly by the coast. You know, it's kind of like around golden hour, the sun is kind of low in the sky. But when you compare the 24 to 70, you know, we can kind of be anywhere in the world or just anywhere and we wouldn't really know unless we had more information about the surrounding settings. If we compare um, 70 to 35, 35, uh, your subject starts to pop out a little bit more again, but you still have a lot of information from the surrounding settings. Now, when we compare 70 mil to 50, 50 is kind of starting to become a lightweight portrait lens at this point. And perhaps it can be, you know, uh, even more powerful portrait lens if I were to take a few steps forward. But again, for the sake of this video, I stood in the same place to demonstrate, you know, how each focal length, like the jump from each focal length, I wanted to demonstrate that for this video. All right, guys, so that marks the end of this video. Um, again, so it was a little bit rushed uh, and the lighting was a little inconsistent, but I hope I was able to do a good job it's showing you the differences in the range from 24 to 35, 50, and 70. Um, overall, guys, though, like, you know, again, not every day is gonna be a perfect photography day, but 24 to 70, 
in my opinion, is just like the ultimate range uh, you can have. And if there was one lens I would recommend, it would be the 24 to 70 G Master Mark II. And I would say go ahead and get 24 to 70 GM2, not the 24 to 7, uh, not the 20 to 70 F4. Just invest in quality straight off the bat and don't worry about it uh, after that. So again, thank you guys for watching. Shout out to my model over here. See you guys in the next video. Peace.